I planted three different types of potatoes in three separate garden beds. Each bag of seed potatoes weighed one kilogram or two pounds. I grew them all for several months and what was the return? G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video we'll find out what return I got on my potato investment and I'll also chat about what kind of harvest you should expect when growing potatoes at home. Let's get into it. I'll just put this one back for now and we'll dig him up later. But first, why would you bother growing potatoes at home? I mean, they're as cheap as chips to buy in the supermarket or from a takeaway food store. Well, there are several good reasons why you should. Homegrown potatoes are extra fresh and that makes a difference when eating and even how long they keep in the crisper or in the pantry or on the kitchen bench. Us backyard farmers don't need to spray the crop with a herbicide to weed or a pesticide to kill pests. We can do all that by hand and produce an organic spud free from chemicals. You can try other varieties that you don't often see in the supermarket. It's a bit like tomatoes. Some tomatoes taste amazing, but they don't transport very well or last very long on the shelf. Supermarkets and Big Ag hate these types of fruit and veg for obvious retail reasons. But you can grow them at home to enjoy because we don't have the market or stocking pressures. And even if the supermarket does stock the same variety as yours, yours will likely taste slightly different or perhaps even better because your soil and conditions are different to those mass grown on a farm. Think about the grape analogy, how the same variety grown in different locations can produce a different tasting or quality wine. It's similar for all fruit and veg. I think that's interesting and fun, which is the final point I'll make about growing potatoes in your own garden. The sheer excitement and challenge of food gardening. The exercise you get, the stress relief, the peace, all those reasons we love to garden. I've already harvested the two round raised beds of potatoes. So this drill in the sleeper bed behind us here, we'll do that together. You'll probably notice that it's likely to be one of the last crops of anything we grow since these beds are totally falling apart. Next year, I'll be replacing these old wooden beds with some new raised steel birdie beds. But that's another video, watch this space. Before we go digging up these potatoes, let's check out those other two beds. In this center round bed here, I've got a little bit of Cancon growing and some Jerusalem artichoke is coming up from last year. But previously, I planted a kilogram bag of Sebago seed potato, certified seed potato, which means they were grown and packed to strict guidelines to ensure they are free from pests and disease. Did you know there are farms that just grow seed potatoes? It's true. They grow seed potatoes to supply the farms that then use them to grow the crops for the retail market. The potato farming industry isn't as simple as you might think, and it's not quite as easy as growing a crop of potatoes, selling most to the supermarket, and holding back some for next season's planting. No way, it's more complicated than that on an agricultural scale. Having said that, backyard growers like us don't have to be as rigid and we can regrow our own potatoes from old stock. I do that all the time. But I also like to buy seed potatoes knowing that they are certified and selected at the right time for best cropping. When I'm growing potatoes, I like to plant them in good, rich soil that has excellent drainage and is nice and crumbly. My grandfather farmed potatoes on his property and one piece of advice he gave me about potato growing was to never overwater them. He said you're better off underwatering potatoes than overwatering because at least with underwatering you'll get some crop but with overwatering they'll just all rot. Although I don't think my grandfather was talking about drought conditions and we've had unseasonably dry weather for months now which has impacted our potato growth and harvest. To slightly underwater and water stressed potatoes are two totally separate things. More about that later. 
When preparing the garden bed for potatoes, I like to till the bed a little because I think it makes it easier for tubers to grow. And I use some fertilizer at planting. A bit of blood and bone works well. Depending on how well the plants are growing, I may give another sprinkle of fertilizer at about the one month or so. I prefer our own compost and soil, but at times when I have a new bed or I don't have enough compost to go around, I will use the cheap bag commercial stuff when I need more medium or when backfilling as the potato plants grow. And then once the plants have mostly died back naturally on their own, that's the cue to harvest them. I prefer to dig with my hands where possible because forks tend to spear the tubers but often a garden fork is necessary. Especially when the going is hard, even for my big paws. This bed here produced four kilograms of potatoes for the one kilogram or two pounds of potatoes that we placed in here. In this round raised bed down the back here, near our compost bays, which I'm now starting to refurb, sneak peek, I'll get to that video hopefully by the end of the year. I planted a kilogram bag of Dutch cream seed potato. We ended up with a slightly worse harvest of 3.5 kilograms. I was expecting a better harvest because this bed was totally new and I had refurbished it, given it an appropriate amount of fertilizer, but it just didn't work out that way. Honestly, I'm not happy with that kind of return for obvious reasons, but now let's check out the sleeper bed where I planted a one kilogram bag of Nicola seed potatoes. Hopefully we'll have better luck this time. Let's start at this end. You can get more plants and possibly better harvest by cutting the seed potatoes into pieces, usually in half if they are big enough. For this experiment, I decided to leave all the seed potato whole simply because most were too small to cut and cutting can introduce disease anyway. Make sure the potatoes have sprouted before you plant them, or they might stay dormant underground and then decay. One thing about growing potatoes in the subtropics is you shouldn't leave them in the ground too long after they're ready to come out. Because if you do, they might rot in ground, or they could sprout and continue to grow and then perish because it's too hot or too cold, depending on the time of year and then the potatoes are ruined. You can use the small ones as baby potatoes or store a selection of them for replanting next season. That's what happens when you use a gardening tool. Just knock the top off that one. How can I have to eat that for lunch? Potatoes take about three to four months from planting to harvest. In our area, we sow potatoes in autumn, around March, April, and again at the end of winter into spring, July, August. So twice a year. Starting to sprout. We can save that one. I'll have one last scan. See if there's any stragglers. No, the only straggler is this fella. Cane toad. Oh, I don't carry like a pork chop. Now I've got to go wash my hands. Three little stragglers. That's not going to be worth much. Rightio. Here we are. Sun's killing me out here, but you can't see my face with the hat on. I know, I know, I'll get inside soon. Not bad, it started off very slow, didn't it? I was quite worried there for a second, still not terrific. Let's weigh them and see exactly what we've got for our one kilogram. Yeah, barely three kilos. Thought so. That's the worst so far. There you go. I've selected some of the best ones. Normally I would expect a six to 10 kilo return on an investment of one kilo of seed potato. In other words, if you get a multiplication in weight of 10 from one, that's amazing. 
down to six from one, I'd be happy enough for a backyard potato harvest. Three to one, or at best four to one, is what I got this season, and it's disappointing. But I can't be too hard on myself because the conditions have been horrendous in our backyard. I know farmers are in drought and they have been for almost a decade. So our heart goes out to them. But in, yeah, in my small way, we couldn't really help it. That's just the way backyard farming is. And just like farmers, backyard food gardeners do tend to have good and bad seasons. Temperatures, rainfall, pests, disease, even the variety of potato and many other factors contribute to the overall harvest. Yeah, I would have loved to have showed off a great big harvest and return off one kilogram, turning it into 10 or 12 kilograms of potatoes, but it wasn't to be. Keep it real, hey. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big fat potato thumbs up and <laughs> subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Share the video around because that helps heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Gosh, I can tell you what, I reckon it's about 35 and it's only nine in the morning. I am melting out here. Time to get inside. Sounds like someone's calling. Catches.